uh, because it's more long term. Yeah, um, College Hill and Fed Fed Hill are definitely the two yeah. highest yeah, investment 100%. property areas. Yeah, so remember that video that we did uh, about Providence. Providence. I did. I did a video of top three neighborhoods to invest in Providence. Mm -hmm. It was Elmhurst, Fed Hill, and um, I think it was Hope, mm -hmm. the third. And we got a decent response, and a lot of people asking a lot of questions about investing in Providence. And right now, we're working with a lot of people who are looking at multi. Uh, gotcha. family investments of profit. So I figured we'll just kind of talk a little bit further about that because honestly, from the time I made that video till now, things has cha have changed and it's actually gotten even more difficult than it was then. Yeah, right. definitely. Those neighborhoods, in my opinion, are still top neighborhoods. Elmhurst, Elmhurst Fed Hill, Hope, but I want to add College Hill as well. It's a really nice neighborhood. Solid addition. Solid, yeah. but uh, the prices on, on College Hill, for example, uh, average price is much higher mm -hmm. than you'll see in Elmhurst and Hope, and then Fed Hill. I'd say Elmerhurst, you are probably are between 380 and 450. Same, in, same as Hope, and then Fed Hill, you're probably now like at 520, mm -hmm. right, for a decent three unit and four unit. And then College Hill, you're going into mid 600s uh, because it's more long term. Yeah, um, College Hill and Fed Fed Hill are definitely the two yeah. highest yeah. investment 100%, property areas. 100 percent. Because the main thing is the main thing is in those areas is because they're almost like market proof. Even if the market shifts, mm -hmm. those areas are still very strong. I mean, real know? estate in general is already a strong, yeah, long term investment. So owning an investment property in that area that already has a, a strong historical background, yeah. it is a safer yeah. purchase yeah. long term. Yeah, sure. I just had this uh, I just had this guy reach out to me from New York last week from our YouTube channel, actually from that video that we did. And he had these questions and he was like, he was looking at a uh, $450,000 three unit in like a certain neighborhood. I'm mm -hmm. not gonna mention which one it was, right? And I'm like, no, actually for that neighborhood, this is not this is not a deal mm -hmm. because he's kind of thinking of that New York. I was like, you gotta get out of the New York mentality. I said, really ideally for a three unit, you don't wanna pay in most areas more than 400,000 for the cash flow to make sense. What does the New, New York mentality mean? Do you well, want to expand York, on that? Yeah, so bit? like if you buy, let's say you buy a three unit, which I don't know how many of them are available in Brooklyn, right? Mm -hmm. But like, you're not buying that for 400,000 there. You're probably paying a million dollars for it, Yeah. you know? So you that's might buy I mean. one, they might change them to condos and you might for, buy one of the condos exactly, for 400,000. For, exactly. You're not buying a three unit exactly, for right? But yeah. the reason also why you don't buy that is because rents are gonna be somewhere between two and 3,000 or even more, right? What do you usually recommend to people that are looking at multis investments in terms of fair market vent, rent versus mortgage payment? Yeah. What, what, what does it have to be in your opinion for the numbers to make sense for it to be a smart I think financial that's investment. a good. That's a good question. I think right now, if you get between seven and seven and nine cap cap rate on investment, okay. I think that's I think that's a good buy because that's a really good buy because mm -hmm. most of them are not. The reason why prices are on multifamilies are so like out of proportion, mm -hmm. uh, and it's harder for an investment to buy something with the conventional way this is taught. You put twenty percent down, you buy a multi unit, you're going to have cash flow, and you're going to have you know a seven eight percent cap rate. The reason why that's difficult is because a lot of people are buying a three unit property and then they buy the three unit property and they live in one of the floors and then they rent the, uh, the other two floors out. If you're doing that, you're not too concerned about giving it, giving an eight or 9% cap rate on that because really what you're thinking about is I'm the, living here for free. The tenants are paying your mortgage. Tenants are paying your mortgage, so right? Your like housing kind of, expense, you were renting before. Your housing you're expenses dropped yeah. significantly. And if, yeah, and if you make, let's say you make like uh, $500 a month extra, mm -hmm. that's like a really big bonus for you. Yeah. So that's the main thing why the multi-units in Providence have exploded, mm -hmm. right? Oh, because so you're seeing more owner-occupied. More owner-occupied. Gotcha. More owner-occupied. And then that's why, like, we have another guy from Boston who's looking more of, like, 10, 15 units, right? Even him, like, w w we found we found a couple of multi-units for that guy, and the owners, the money that they want does not match for, like, a traditional formula of, of, of investing. And mm -hmm. they know they can get it because, like, this guy had, like, five or six multi-units, but there were uh, three units each to so separated. So he was thinking about selling the whole portfolio, but the whole portfolio, he was looking to sell what he would sell these multi-units individually to potentially a, what's the word I'm looking for? Somebody who would uh, live there. Owner yeah, occupied. Owner occupied. For, to own and occupied. So not getting into 10, 15 units, what, what would be the one thing, one word of advice that you would give to somebody that is 
always looking to purchase an investment property as their first property. I would I would tell people if depending on the amount you're pre-approved for, if you can afford in the five hundred thousand dollar range, I would stay to, with the neighborhoods of, of the Fed Hills, Elmhurst, even College Hill. If you can find something like stay in the neighborhoods, even if it feels like you're overpaying because they're strong. So the strong sweet spot in Rhode Island, in your opinion, or not just Rhode Island, but Providence in general, is those four areas at right around the five hundred range. You're going to get a good return on investment. I think you're going to get a, I think you're going to get a decent return on investment. But I think what you want to look is that this will be my other part. If you were looking for that, at least look for a property that is not going to require an extra eighty thousand dollars in renovations before you move in. Most okay. of these multi units, as you know, you got to put a lot of money into them when you buy them because most of the landlords, like yep. Lydia Common on our YouTube said, who said that most of the landlords don't take care of the properties, which is, I, I don't like speaking in terms like that most. What does that mean? But there are a lot of these multi units that are just not taken care of. So buy, if you're going to, sorry, if you're, no, going, you're, if you're going to that price, mm -hmm. if you're going to that price, buy something that you at least don't have to invest anything. It's almost kind of like move in ready. Maybe turnkey quarter, ready. Turnkey ready. Yeah. You know, yeah, there's going to be a little stuff with multi because there's always stuff with any oh, yeah, home, exactly. especially multi-units. Yeah, yeah you, um, I mean, you own one, so yeah. you, you know, you can speak to that too. Yeah, there was a lot of little touch-ups, paint, n nothing too crazy, but it was important for, for me and my wife to make sure that we had yeah. something that was turnkey ready. So are you seeing in those multi-units in those areas, are they coming on the market as often as other properties? Because we're dealing with an inventory issue right now. No, are you noticing that there's less of those homes for sale? Way less. So way right less. now there's about 200 and probably in, in Rhode Island. So when I hear that personally, I think of making sure you're diligent with your pre-approval, make sure 100%. that you have all your finances, everything in order, whether you're doing cash or mortgage or whatever yeah. it is, you, you have it at the readies because how, how quickly are houses going under the contract right two, now? Two, three days. I mean, two, three days. Yeah, if, so you're, if you're not pre-approved, I mean, honestly, maybe two years ago, I would show people houses if they didn't have a pre-approval because they could figure it out after. Mm -hmm. But now I don't. I'm like, if, you don't, if you're not willing to talk to Zach, you got pre-approved, There's I can't help you. Right. So I'm just not going to waste my time. I'm sorry. Like I, we, we had a meeting today and I was like, we cannot treat this business the way we treated it three years ago. It's just not the same thing. We mm -hmm. can't do it. We have to, if you, you need only real committed people looking to make this happen. Right. Like our uh, buyer, Alex, right? Like mm -hmm. he got pre-approved. The day he got pre-approved, the next day he found a property and got an offer accepted. Yep. But he came to the office. We met, went went through everything. He did everything he was supposed to do. And then you get these guys like, oh yeah, I'm getting the documents ready. And then they'll send me a house to go see. I'm like, what do you want me to, like, what are you going to do when you see the house? What if yeah. you like it? So in conclusion, serious buyers, reach out to Albert, reach out to myself. We will get oh. you pre pre-approved quickly, efficiently, get you set up on a home search so you can find the home that you are looking for. Do you have anything else to add? Touch on on that? Yeah. That's it. Top neighborhoods again, uh, Elmhurst, Hope, Fed Hill, College Hill. These are really, really, really top neighborhoods. But then there's other neighborhoods too that are kind of upcoming. Maybe we'll do a video on that too, with Zach. Mm -hmm on the future upcoming neighborhoods. Neighborhoods that are kind of ignored a little bit right now and what's gonna happen, a lot of money is gonna start going to those neighborhoods now because a lot of people are just getting priced out of these neighborhoods and then those neighborhoods are gonna be left up. We so should definitely like, do that in the future, but do you know what they should do now? Subscribe. And? Hit smash the, the like button. Smash the like don't, button. Don't hit the like Boom, button. Boom, bro. Smash yes. the like button. Destroy yes. the like button. Destroy, absolutely. Thank you guys, appreciate it.